Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. Today's video is going to be the sixth installment in my anti-aging skincare ingredient series and today's video is on moisturizers. Now moisturizers per se are not an anti-aging ingredient because they don't do anything at the cellular level to change your skin. I'm including them in this series because moisturizers are really good for your skin and they're really good in helping your skin to look a little bit younger. But if you want to know what are like the heavy hitters, the things that can really make a change on the cellular level in your skin, I would encourage you to watch the entire series. I will link the entire series right up here as well as in the information box below the video. So moisturizers basically function in a few different ways. They can help to attract water to the surface of the skin to add more water Water and more hydration to the skin, but they can also trap water on the surface of the skin and keep it from evaporating. So the outermost layer of our skin is called the stratum corneum. That is made up out of all dead skin cells. But dead skin cells have a purpose. It's good that they're there. They protect us from sun and pollution and things like that. So those dead skin cells are super absorbent as you see anytime you take a bath and your fingers come out all pruney. So those cells can absorb five to six times their weight in water and can expand threefold in volume. The ideal water percentage in the stratum corneum is like between 20 and 30 percent to have your skin looking good and supple and hydrated. When the stratum corneum is dry, the edges curl up, they look really dry and flaky. It makes your wrinkles look twice as big. Since the stratum corneum is so good at absorbing water, right after you get out of the shower, right after you get out of the tub, right after you wash your face is the perfect time to put on your moisturizer while your skin is still damp. This is one of the basic tenets of my entire skincare routine is that I like to moisture lock so I want to lock that moisture right onto the surface of my skin. And to do that, the type of moisturizing ingredient that you need, they're called occlusives. They're the ones that basically form a barrier on top of your skin and keep that water from evaporating. So the most common occlusive ingredients that you need to be looking for in your moisturizers are shea butter, cocoa butter, mineral oil, petrolatum, paraffin wax, dimethicone and other silicones, cetyl alcohol, stearic acid, and lanolin. Of course, they don't all work the same. The most effective occlusive is petrolatum, followed by lanolin, mineral oil, and then silicones. Now, with the exception of silicones, those top three have a tendency to be pretty darn greasy, and so they don't really work very well as a moisturizer for day wear, but they're great to use at night. They're great to use, especially on irritated, dry, chapped skin overnight when it doesn't really matter what you look like. You can just put a t-shirt on uh, your pillowcase so that you don't get grease all over the place and just grease up and that will hold a lot of water into your skin and help your skin heal overnight. The other occlusives are much better for daytime moisturizers and you'll see them mixed in with other moisturizing ingredients like other humectants and emollients to make kind of the perfect moisturizer. So that's the best one for fighting against trans epidermal water loss. But then there are two other categories of moisturizing ingredients that can help in different ways. So there are the humectants, which are water binding molecules. They basically soak up water from either the air or your skin. You know how in the summer your skin just naturally looks plumper? That is from your skin just pulling moisture from the air. So in the drier times of the year or in drier climates, it tends to pull the moisture from the deeper layers of the skin, which is why it's so important to drink a lot of water and hydrate. So the humectant ingredients to look for on the label in your skin care are glycerin, panthenol, which is vitamin B5, propylene glycol, hyaluronic acid, urea, sodium PCA, and algae. But I know a lot of people are concerned that if the humectants do draw the moisture from their deeper layers of the skin or from their body rather than from the air, that it is going to be dehydrating as an effect. And that can happen. So again, lots of water, but that's why you also need to combine a humectant with an occlusive. So if you have a uh, moisturizer that has both ingredients in it, then that will help to lock the water onto the surface of your skin so that it doesn't just evaporate as quickly. Now the third category is the emollients. They don't actually affect the water content of your skin. They tend to fill in the spaces between the cells and they help 
the skin to look less rough and to soften and smooth the look of the skin. The more common emollients that you'll see on a moisturizer's label are either fatty alcohols or plant-based oils. So some of those are cetyl alcohol, cetyryl alcohol, sterile alcohol, stearic acid, olive oil, jojoba oil, sesame oil, sweet almond oil, other plant oils like squalane and coconut oil. In general, oils aren't great moisturizers on their own, but they do work to help make the skin look a little bit smoother. And actually a lot of the ingredients do double duty. Some of them are humectants and also emollients, and some are occlusives and also humectants. Like dimethicone is a humectant and an emollient. All right, so those are the three big umbrellas of ingredients that you can look for in a good moisturizer. Some other things that I like to look for are fatty lipids, and one of my favorites is ceramides. Ceramides comprise 35 to 40% of the lipids in our skin naturally. Naturally. But of course, as with everything, we produce less of them over time. You can actually replace some of them by putting them on topically and they also work to protect and rebuild the skin barrier. So ceramides are awesome. There are lots of different types of ceramides. Uh, it's unclear exactly which ones work the best in skincare, but there is kind of a formula of three ceramides with cholesterol and something else that is supposed to work the best for replacing those fatty lipids. And so I look for that kind of group of things together in uh, my favorite moisturizers. Another top ingredient in a lot of moisturizers is good old water. By having water in the formula, you're putting water directly on your skin that your skin can absorb. Of course, some of it will evaporate while you're putting it on and waiting for it to dry, but some of it will be absorbed in your skin and it will also be locked onto the surface of your skin with the occlusives that are in there. And also some of the humectants will use that water to bind to and to puff up and trap that water on the surface of your skin. When I'm looking for a moisturizer, I look for a few things. Number one is I definitely look for those ceramides. I love a moisturizer with glycerin in it. I love a moisturizer with hyaluronic acid in it. I do like my moisturizer to have some anti-aging ingredients in it. Another ingredient that I love to see is niacinamide, which is a really good anti-aging ingredient that's very inexpensive that they can put in a lot of it and it will do a lot of good things for your skin. I want it to not have drying ingredients in it. So any moisturizer that has SD alcohol, denatured alcohol um, at the top or even the bottom of the ingredient list, for me, I'm not going to use it because SD alcohol is one of the drying alcohols. As we mentioned before, there are fatty alcohols like cetyryl alcohol and sterile alcohol that are actually good to have in there. So just make sure you understand the difference between alcohols when you're looking at an ingredients list. I prefer products without fragrance. Um, fragrance just bothers me. I can't having <laughs> I can't stand having my face smell like a fragrance. So I tend to go for things that are fragrance free. Um, fragrances can also be problematic as far as skin reactions and allergic reactions and skin irritations and things like that. The other thing that's important when picking a moisturizer is to uh, understand your own skin and what type of skin you have. Drier skin people will need a thicker, more creamy moisturizer, something that's more occlusive and more emollient. People with more oily skin might want a lighter weight moisturizer, something that's less occlusive, that doesn't kind of trap your oils on the surface of your skin. And then of course it's whether you're going to be using it during the day or during the night. A lighter weight moisturizer for day wear, a heavier weight moisturizer for overnight. So all right, let's get into products. My all-time favorite moisturizer is from CeraVe. It's the CeraVe PM Facial Moisturizing Lotion. It has all of my core ingredients that I want. This has water, glycerin, niacinamide. It has the ceramides, the right mix of the three of those with the other two helper things, and it has hyaluronic acid. So this one is awesome. Now I understand that it was recently reformulated slightly and I have the old one and I have the new one. They have all the same stuff so, so the new one still does have the niacinamide, the glycerin, the hyaluronic acid, the ceramides. Everything that was good in this one is still in this one. When my skin is irritated now this does sting it a little bit so I'm not sure about that. I know a lot of people have looked to switch away from this. It's, it's hard to find ceramides in inexpensive lotions. This guy is $15 at the drugstore. It is amazing. I've been using it for years. I love it. So this is great for use during 
during the day, whether your skin is dry or normal or combo or oily, because it's a really lightweight lotion. And I use this one at night in the summertime because I do have a combination skin still. But the uh, moisturizer that I use overnight during the winter when it gets a little bit drier is the Olay Regenerist Micro Sculpting Cream. It's got water, glycerin, but it also has niacinamide. It's got a peptide and it has hyaluronic acid. So this is a thicker moisturizer. This is great for nighttime. I wouldn't use this during the day unless you have super duper dry skin. And then Olay has come out with their whips version of these. They have a whipped version of this, which of the whips, I prefer the Total Effects whip just because in order to um, whip them up, they added a lot of silicones, a lot of dimethicone, which as we know is a good moisturizing ingredient. So it's fine to have it in there. But this is the one where niacinamide appears higher on the label. So when they whipped up the Regenerous Micro Sculpting Cream, niacinamide kind of dropped further down the ingredient list. So I do like the Total Effects Whip better than the Olay Regenerous Whip. But if you're not getting the Whip one, then I like the Regenerous Micro Sculpting Cream. Okay, so this could be like a day wear option for people with drier skin, and this would be a nighttime option for people with any kind of skin. I was looking for another ceramide moisturizer because I think ceramides are so important to have in your moisturizer along with the other things. Um, so the one that I've been trying lately is the Paula's Choice Clinical Ceramide Enriched Firming Moisturizer. So where this does contain the ceramides, the mix of the three ceramides with the other helper ingredients, it doesn't contain the niacinamide um, and it doesn't have hyaluronic acid, but it has a whole mess of other stuff in it. It has retinol, it has a few different types of vitamin C. It's it's got some um, grapeseed oil in there. It's got panthenol. It has glycerin. You know, comparing these two, I still like the CeraVe better. I don't really need the retinol. I don't need the vitamin C's because I use separate retinoid and a separate vitamin C. So for me, some of the stuff in here is a little bit of a waste on me. Um, it's a good moisturizer to get your ceramides in, but it doesn't contain all the stuff that I'm looking for. So if you're not into the Paula's Choice or the CeraVe, you might want to get just a regular moisturizer and then add a ceramide separately and I found a couple of products where you can do that. One is the Elizabeth Arden Ceramide Capsules. They basically come in these single-use little things and you open it up and you just smear that all over your face and your neck and everywhere else and those are great. They contain ceramides, the three ceramides that you want with the mix and this is also in a nice moisturizing base that contains a lot of silicones but also a lot of good moisturizers, occlusives and things like that so that makes a really nice kind of last step before your heavyweight moisturizer. That's how I use it. I've been using these for about two months and I really, really like them to get an added um, ceramide boost where I don't have ceramides in my nighttime moisturizer. I like to add a little ceramide boost. And then another way to do it is with these little skin ink um, boosters. And these guys are so cute. This is a third of an ounce. I mean, it's kind of expensive, $35 for a third of an ounce, but you don't use this like a regular serum. This is like a booster to add to something. So what I've been doing is I've been adding this to my um, Olay Regenerous, and then I am getting the ceramides in there. So it practically makes it into my CeraVe lotion, but in a heavier weight, more occlusive formula. You know, I get out the amount that I'm using, and then I mix it in with like one drop of this, and that gives me some ceramides in there. I feel like this product is such a great idea. They actually will sell you like three of these little boosters with a larger dropper bottle, and so you can kind of custom mix your own moisturizer. So the ones I would be interested in are this one, the ceramides, the coenzyme Q10, and the vitamin B5 and niacinamide. But it's a really cool little kit where you can be your own little chemist. They have ones with vitamin A, so retinol. They have one with vitamin C. The base formula that each of these is in already contains hyaluronic acid and glycerin. So I thought that was a cool product. So speaking of hyaluronic acid, and I know some people just like a hyaluronic acid moisturizer. So some of the ones that I like are this one from Peter Thomas Roth. This is called Water Drench Hyaluronic Cloud Cream. It's kind of like a little whipped up um, gel it's very bouncy and lightweight. This one just soaks right into the skin. What I like about this one is that it does contain ceramides, but it has 30% hyaluronic acid, 
complex. So this I like for oily skin for daytime. This is awesome. So it's fragrance free, it's alcohol free, so really loving that one. And then a more natural hyaluronic acid moisturizer is this one from Derma E. It's called their Hydrating Night Cream. So this guy has a lot of really good moisturizers in it. It's got some oils like jojoba seed oil. It's got green tea. It also contains um, panthenol, which is B5, hyaluronic acid, glycerin, um, sterile alcohol. So it's got a whole bunch of great moisturizers in there. This one also does have some anti-aging actives. It's got a vitamin C ester. It's got a vitamin A ester. It's got a vitamin E ester. So um, it's trying to be a little bit more than a basic moisturizer, but this is a nice one. My problem with most of the like all natural product products is that um, they put in a lot of fragrance. So this one has a much lighter fragrance than some of the other ones that I tried. It does have a fragrance though, and it's kind of sweet and almost like candy. It is definitely for night cream. It's a little bit, you know, greasy and more emollient, which is great to have for a night cream because that's what you want. And some of my favorite moisturizers that are really basic to use when your skin is super irritated or really, really dry in the dead of winter, that don't have a lot of bells and whistles, don't have anything anti-aging in them. One of the best ones that I found is the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast B5 Balm. And you know, I'm always trying skincare, and so I just tried something new, a neck and chest cream that everyone wanted to know about, and it instantly irritated my neck, and I'm so bummed. So I have been using this, and it's much calmer and a little bit better looking now. It was really, really bad looking yesterday. So this contains dimethicone, glycerin, shea butter, and panthenol, so those are all really great moisturizing ingredients. It also has zinc, which helps to calm and soothe the skin. So that is my favorite for irritated skin currently. A couple of other things that are really great to use on irritated skin are, of course, your basic old Aquaphor Healing Ointment. This one is 41% petrolatum, so that is really gonna lock in your mo moisture. So where this doesn't have petrolatum or petrolatum, I usually will put this on first and then put this on over the top to really lock it in. But this one also contains mineral oil, lanolin, and panthenol, and glycerin. So just on its own, this one is great, but it's really super greasy, and so you really can only put this on at night. This one's really great just for putting on your lips at night to keep your lips uh, moisturized overnight. So what I would say about moisturizer, especially a real basic one, is there's really not reason to spend a lot of money on a moisturizer. The ingredients in them aren't super expensive, and so there's no reason for them to cost like a couple hundred dollars. Now, if you're the kind of person who just loves, you know, expensive skincare and that's makes you comfortable and that makes you happy, then by all means, go ahead and buy, you know, creme de la mer. But based on the research into the ingredients, there's really no difference between a like $100 or $200 creme de la mer cream and a drugstore cream. Basically what creme de la mer has in it is a lot of the really heavy hitter occlusives like lanolin, petrolatum, um, wax, and mineral oil, and it also has algae in there like special magical sea soup that's in there. But um, you know, it is a pretty basic moisturizer. It doesn't really have much in there that's special. But if you love a luxury experience, you love the smell of it or whatever, it's great. But it also get, does contain fragrance and SD alcohol. So while I have used that in the past, I didn't love the smell of it. I didn't really love it, but it may be a great product for you. So I will link it below if you're into Creme de la Mer and you want to use that one. So as you can see, there are lots and lots of moisturizers to choose from. These ones are pretty basic moisturizers that that might have a little bit of anti-aging going on, but their job is to keep water in your skin and on the surface of your skin, and everything that I've shown you here today will do a great job at doing that. Combination moisturizer anti-aging products are really great, um, but there are too many to go over in one video, so where this one is on the moisturizers, I'm gonna stick to the moisturizers and end the product recommendations here. I hope I was able to clarify some of what moisturizers do and how they work for you and what you can look for in your products. So if you found the video helpful and informative, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell while you're there so you get notified when I upload new videos in the series or in general. So thank you so much for your time. You know, I always really appreciate your watching. So have a great day, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.